Hi there, my name is Raylan, and today's video is about building a support system when you are facing a chronic health condition like chronic fatigue syndrome or ME, long COVID, fibromyalgia, any of these sorts of things. I've talked about this in a recent holistic health summit, and I've mentioned it briefly in other videos on my channel as well, but I wanted to expand on it here today. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five ways to bring more support into your life. And the reason I think this is so important is because I get so many people messaging me who are in such a bad place. They're incredibly sick and they're mostly all alone and they just have no idea how it is they're supposed to keep going and get through this, doing it all by themselves. And it's really heartbreaking to see, especially when these days there are many different options available for support, ranging from free all the way up to uh, probably quite pricey. And just before I dive in, I just want to take a quick moment to thank so many of you for subscribing. It really is nice to see. It makes me feel like uh, what I'm doing is helpful and appreciated. I hope that's the case. It means YouTube will put these videos in front of more people who might possibly benefit from this kind of information and support. And of course, it means that you're not going to miss out on anything coming up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I encourage you to subscribe because I've got a lot of really great stuff coming up on this channel and it would be great to have you join us here. So support with chronic health conditions. The unfortunate reality is, I'm sure many of us find that when you first become unwell, you actually lose a lot of your support system instead of gaining a bigger one. You know, relationships drift off, you have less energy, less ability to make plans with people. So it doesn't take long for many of us to become more and more isolated. And I would encourage you to think about support in a variety of different ways. For me, when I first became unwell, my core support system was primarily people that I paid to be in my life. Of course, there was my father and a couple other people that were really wonderful, but the people <laughs> who were really in it with me daily, weekly were my counselor, my massage therapist, and my colon hydrotherapist of all people. And I remember thinking, is this bad? Is there something wrong with the fact that most of the people in my life wouldn't be here if I wasn't paying them, but I came to peace with it. So it might not be what you conventionally think of as your support system. And if you can't afford to pay people to be in your life, that's okay. This is just one example. One of the benefits I found actually of having a core support system of people who I was paying is that because I didn't have a lot to give, the relationship was more about me than it was about them. And which is what I needed at the time. I really needed people to pour a lot of love and support into me uh, with the understanding that I wouldn't be able to give back a lot to them. And that balanced out over time. Eventually I stopped paying them. And two of the three I kept hanging around with on a regular basis. They became very good friends of mine. And then I was able to be there for them. All right, so let's dive in. Five ways to bring more support into your life. The first is something that I only recently became aware of, and this is online counseling subscription. All right, I'm going to start with some paid options and work my way down the list until we get to some ones that are free. So the first one I want to talk about is something that I am only newly aware of, which is online counseling subscriptions. I recently started paying for an online counseling subscription because I found that any point in my life, the counseling is helpful and that this is a much more financially feasible option than going to see someone in person. Looking in San Francisco, the average cost I was seeing per session was about 250 US dollars. And through the online counseling subscription that I'm using, which is betterhelp.com, it works out to about $80 per session. So still not cheap, but a lot more affordable than more traditional methods. And this isn't a sponsored video. I don't have any affiliate links. I just really like places like BetterHelp because I think they have some really great stuff to offer. So in addition to weekly counseling sessions that you do online via conferencing software, you can also touch base with them in between sessions if you want to text or email and you need some additional support in between. And they have lots of webinars on topics like boundaries and anxiety and dealing with depression and all sorts of great stuff that are available and included in the subscription as well. So everything I list in this video will be linked in the video description if you're interested in checking it out. A second way to get some really great support is to hire a health recovery coach. I don't know if these existed when I was unwell. I certainly didn't know of them, but there are tons now and I know many of them personally myself and I, they are just amazing people and I've talked to many of the people who have worked with them. 
and they have nothing but great things to say and are just so appreciative of the support. Many health recovery coaches are people just like you and I who have gone through hell with our health and then found a way to recover and uh, get their life back and come out the other side and have become passionate about helping others as a result of what they've been through. So this can be a really great way to connect with someone who just gets it. You don't have to explain anything or justify anything. Don't have to waste any energy on that. They know more or less what you're going through because they've been through something very similar. And if you're not sure where to find a health coach, a good friend of mine, Liz Carlson, has put together a list on her website, healwithliz.com, of health recovery coaches, many of whom I have interviewed right here on this channel and have a ton of respect for. If I had known there were health coaches available when I was struggling with this illness, I would have definitely looked at that list and probably contacted them all. So I encourage you, if you're not already working with a health coach, to at least click on the link, take a look at the list and see if anyone kind of feels like they might fit. They might be a good person for you. Now, a third way to get support during your chronic illness recovery is with online support forums. And these, most of them anyways, are completely free. Now you have to be careful and look around and find one that feels healthy and like a good fit for you. But I've talked to so many people that say they are so grateful for have having joined some of these communities. I just interviewed someone today for this channel who was saying it was one of the main things that helped with her recovery because she was feeling alone and isolated in this and like nobody got it. And it was a great place to ask questions and get support. So there are many great places like this online. The only one I can personally vouch for is my own Facebook group. It's called ME CFS Recovery Support and Inspiration, linked in the video description. But it has people with all sorts of health conditions. We've had a lot of people with long COVID join. It's very optimistic and recovery focused and just a really supportive space to come hang out in once in a while. Someone else I interviewed, Lori, gave me another tip around this. She said, you can start your own Facebook page. If you're needing a lot of help, but you don't have the energy to manage all of that and you aren't quite sure how to go about it, start a Facebook page for you and invite people to come join it. And you can list things there that you need types of support. And then the people in your life can come and take a look and see what they might be able to help out with. And a fourth way to get more support in your life, and this might sound kind of obvious, but most of us actually don't do this, is just to ask for help. To ask for help and to be specific. When I think back to when I first became unwell, I imagine there are a lot of people that wanted to help and people who probably said things like, you know, let me know what I can do. I'm here if you need anything. And I just, I didn't know what to do with that. And so people just kind of drifted off. So more often than not, people actually do want to be there for you. They just don't know how. A good place for you to start is to take an inventory of what you actually need in your life in terms of support. Do you need help with rides to doctor's appointments, with meals, with childcare, with household chores, with emotional support, someone just to listen and be a friend? So figure out what you need and then either post all that up on your Facebook page or reach out to some specific people in your life who you think might be good for that type of support. If you have a friend who loves to cook and cooks a lot, it might not be a big deal for them to drop off some extra meals at your place every now and then. And the fifth thing about building a support system is more about how to manage it. I definitely suggest keeping it tight, keeping it a smaller circle because managing lots of people can be very energy consuming. It can be very draining. And be honest with these people. They can't support you if they don't know what you're going through. And in my experience, when I do open up to people and I do tell them about some of these challenges and struggles that I'm facing or have faced, it normalizes this behavior and it gives them permission to feel safe and okay to tell you honest struggles from their life as well. And talk to these people, talk to this core group of people that you build up or have built up about caregiver burnout as well, because it's important that they know that it's okay for them to come to you and say, I know I was able to do this for you before, but I'm not able to anymore. And they need to know that that's okay. Encourage them to be honest with you and to take care of themselves as well and not burn themselves out in this process. And with all of these people, think about the word choices that you use. I, a lot of us, I think, fall into a place of feeling a lot of guilt and we're apologizing 
all the time. I'm sorry I'm late. I'm sorry I had to cancel last minute. Oh, I'm sorry I forgot what you said. I have this brain fog and I can't think. And this makes us feel bad. And it actually can make them feel bad too, because then they feel guilt and like they have to make you feel better. Like, oh no, no, it's okay. So simply by changing the words you use, like switching, I'm sorry to thank you. Thank you for your patience with my being late. Thank you for your understanding with my last minute cancellations. It makes you feel better. It makes them feel better. And it can just overall allow you to have healthier and happier relationships with the people around you. So that's it. So there's no need for you to be a martyr. If you are currently struggling and doing all of this alone, it doesn't have to be that way. And a good place to start, if you're not already a part of it, is just to click on the link in this video description and come join my Facebook group. There are currently over 2000 really amazing people there who blow me away every single day with the way they show up for one another and support one another and help one another. So if you're not already there, we would love, love to have you come join us.